more attention needs to be played to domestic violence and brain injury. October is Domestic Violence Month, a campaign initiated to raise awareness of the multitude of issues facing victims and provide needed support. Did you know on average 20 people per minute are physically abused by an intimate partner in the United States according to the Centers for Disease Control? This equates to over 10 million women and men being victimized each year. One in four women will become a victim of domestic violence during their lifetime, and greater than 90% of the injuries sustained are to the face, neck, and head. In a study conducted by the New York State Office for the Prevention of Domestic Violence, which examined women in three domestic violence shelters, researchers found 92% of the women questioned had been hit in the head by their partners more than once. 83% were hit in the head and shaken severely. 8% were hit in the head over 20 times in the preceding year. In addition to being struck in the head or neck, other common causes of brain injury associated with this domestic violence include being pushed against the wall or other surface, being thrown down a flight of stairs, being subject to shaking or strangulation, being subject to suffocation because of the head and face being pushed against the mattress or pillow. A victim of domestic violence may sustain a traumatic brain injury with no obvious signs of trauma, and they are never evaluated or treated for this injury. Constant headaches, mood and behavior issues, and cognitive impairments are frequently reported and observed in domestic violence survivors but all too frequently, the underlying cause of their difficulties is not identified and their signs and symptoms are simply ignored. Why? Because despite all the knowledge we have accumulated about traumatic brain injury, law enforcement, our judicial system, our medical system, and even domestic violence shelters still do not use, universally screen for TBI when domestic violence is suspected or reported. As an attorney and advocate for brain injury survivors, I'm concerned the victims of domestic violence are frequently abused again by the civil justice system. When a domestic violence victim appears in court for a protective order or seeking custody of her children, she may be late to court or miss a required appearance date or may not occur articulate crucial facts because of her cognitive impairment, because of behavioral and emotional trauma associated with her brain injury, a domestic violence survivor may be accused of poor parenting skills and be deprived of custody. Emotional outbursts in court may cause judges and others to view the victim with skepticism and dismiss their arguments. And although care, support, and rehabilitation is required following a, a brain injury, abusive spouses are rarely ordered to pay for needed treatment. Law enforcement personnel must be educated about the signs and symptoms of brain injury. Proper screening of domestic violence victims needs to take place in physicians' offices, in urgent care centers, and in emergency departments. Domestic violence shelters need to screen all those seeking assistance for traumatic brain injury. The matrimonial bar needs to learn more about traumatic brain injury because they are in a frequently in a position to make necessary referrals for treatment and inform the court system of the peculiar problems that their clients are facing when they come to court. The judiciary needs to understand the physical, cognitive, emotional, and behavioral signs and symptoms of TBI, and treat domestic survivors with dignity and respect. All survivors of domestic violence must be screened for various forms of physical abuse that can lead to brain injury. 
A special screening tool known as HELPS aids in determining whether a victim of domestic violence should be seen by a qualified medical provider for further evaluation. Here are questions that should be asked by all those who interact with victims of domestic violence. Did your partner ever hit you in the face or head? And if so, with what? Did your partner ever slam your head on another object or push you so hard that you fell and hit your head? Did your partner ever shake you? Did your partner ever try to strangle or choke you or do anything else that made it hard for you to breathe? Did you ever go to the emergency room after an incident? If so, why? Did they ask whether you had been hit in the head or indicate that they suspected you had a head injury or a concussion? Was there ever a time when you thought you needed to go to the emergency department but didn't go because you couldn't afford it or because your partner prevented you from going? And if you did go to the emergency room, did you think you got all the treatment you needed? Did you ever lose consciousness or blackout because of what your partner did to you? Have you been having problems concentrating or remembering things? Are you having trouble finishing things you do? Are people telling you you don't seem like yourself or that your behavior has changed? Does your partner say you have changed? and use that as an excuse to abuse you more? Have you been having difficulties performing your usual activities? Are you experiencing mood swings that you don't understand? Has it gotten harder for you to function when you're under stress? Have you been sick or had physical problems? And if so, what kind? Do you experience any recurring headaches or fatigue? Have you experienced any changes in your vision, in your hearing, or in your sense of smell or taste? Do you find yourself becoming dizzy, or do you experience a lack of balance? Together, during Domestic Violence Awareness Month, let's raise awareness of domestic violence and traumatic brain injury. You can learn more on our website, brainlaw.com backslash brain dash injuries, backslash domestic dash violence. Thanks for joining me this week. And I look forward to meeting with you again next week on a new edition of the Brain Injury Insider.